Okay, this is the AP Classroom Progress Check FRQ number one. Again, as always, you should have done this in advance so you have a good feel for the question. Um, so yeah, here we go. We got um, two different cycles, and if you take a look at these two different cycles, cycle A, cycle B, they're essentially the exact same thing, just in one case you have a kind of a clockwise direction, and the other case you have this counterclockwise direction. And they're asking you what's the difference in the work. So um, hopefully you notice, remember work is essentially the area under the curve here. In the case when you have a full cycle, it would be the full area that's enclosed. Okay, and you can see that they're the same. So for both cases, the work is the same. The only difference is in one case, there's more work being done on the system. In the other case, more work being done by the system. So the way you do that, you look at the dominant cycle. The dominant cycle is three to four. Okay, and in one case, the volume's increasing. One case, the volume's decreasing. So I like to use just kind of my piston concept to help me out with this. So again, we have our little piston here, piston cylinder. So uh, remember, the system is defined as the atoms here on the inside. And when the atoms are doing the work, they're going to be pushing the piston up. So the volume is going to increase when the atoms or the system is doing the work. So when, system is being, when work is being done by the system, then the volume increases. Okay, so that means that in which of these is work being done by the system? That would be cycle number A. So that's when work is being done by the system. Now let's go back to the question. They're saying in which case um, they're asking about work done on, right, on the system here. And so the one that has more work done by uh, on the system is going to be cycle B. Okay, because cycle A it's done by, cycle B it's done by on. So more work is done on the system in cycle B. Okay, now they just want you to calculate it. So remember the work is equal to negative pressure times the change in volume, right? So you're just going to look at it for each process. So I'll do it for cycle A. Um, cycle A when we go from work from 1 to 2. Okay, so we'll write negative pressure, that's P low. And then we're going from 1 to 2, so we're going to go the volume low minus volume high. Now hopefully you notice for 2 to 3, so the work for 2 to 3 as well as the work from um, 4 to 1, since it's a vertical line, that's simply going to be 0. And then the work from 3 to 4, let's go ahead and write this one out. So again, we're going to go negative and then we'll go pressure high and then this one we're going to go volume high minus volume low so the net work we're just going to add that all up hopefully you can do that and you know the solution they give you that answer so I'm not going to write it out but you're just going to simply add up that whole thing and it's going to be a big old mess of variables there that would give you the total work for B, uh, well, you're just going to go in the opposite. So for work, I'll just write this for work for cycle B, is essentially going to be the negative of the work of cycle A. And you can do it out individually. I would just simply actually just put a big negative in front of it all or just kind of reverse it all if I were to do that. So question C is asking, um, draw a new cycle. And in this one, you want the work done to be greater. So that's the key, you want it to be greater. So you could draw anything here. You just got to make sure that the area that's enclosed is greater than what they have there. So it doesn't have to be like a formal process, like a, you know, isobaric, isochoric, whatever. So, I mean, you could literally just do this and you would be good to go, okay? As long as the area enclosed is larger for one than the other. Um, now they did say on, so if I were to do this, I would actually, you know, kind of draw the direction here. But um, I think in the in their rubric, they didn't they didn't draw that. But I would do that just to be sure. Uh, all right, letter D. Which of these has the average greatest average kinetic energy? All right, so essentially you want to figure out which of these um, is hotter, right? Or which of these has the highest temperature? So recall you have your, your PV equals NRT equation, 
right? So to get the highest possible temperature, you want the combination of the highest pressure and the highest volume. So that would be over here, number four. Remember this side of the graph is gonna be the hot part of the graph. This side of the graph is gonna be the cold where it's the smallest pressure and smallest volume. Um, so anyways, you would basically say step four. And basically, if you were to write this out, you would say something you know, like four. Uh, this has the highest pressure and volume, which means according to PV equals N NRT, that would be the highest temperature. And high temperature, we know, means the atoms are moving faster. And if the atoms are moving faster, therefore they're going to have a higher kinetic energy. Okay, so I would probably try to be a little more thorough. And in the rubric, they are a little more thorough, but um, this is the basic concept to solve for that. All right, letter E. In terms of forces and impulse, how does the energy relate to the pressure? So the very last question. So as we just said, um, if you have a higher kinetic energy, right that means that the velocity is going to be faster temperatures higher kinetic energy is higher velocity is higher all those things are proportional to each other so basically if you think about this here's our um here's our cylinder or whatever let's say there's atoms inside of here if they're moving faster they're going to collide with the walls at a higher speed okay and so if they hit the walls hit walls faster, oops, walls faster, that means they're going to hit it with a higher force, right? So the atom goes, bumps into the wall, kind of reverses direction, the wall's going to hit it with a greater force to reverse its direction, therefore the atoms must be hitting the wall with a greater force, so the force goes up, okay? And then recall pressure, essentially pressure is force per unit area. So if they hit the walls with more force, that means the overall pressure inside must be higher. So pressure should be higher. Okay, so nice proportionality there. So again, you should kind of write this out. This is kind of, I guess, how I would structure this and then kind of put it more in um, kind of a formal uh, sentence structure form. Again, read over the rubric to get some good examples. They do a really good job on this one giving you examples of that. All right, let me know if you have any questions.